coverage of the 2014 Season 4 Club UK and Ireland Championship is next here on Racebot TV. The NASCAR Peak Anti-Breeze Series, powered by iRacing.com, has officially begun. It's all in control of Brad Davies in that 11 machine. Green flag flies. He's damn near banged up, though. Now the 93 is going to push the four of Brian Day all the way up the wall. Four wide down the super stretch point. And now the 93 39, the three machine goes around. Big trouble in the back. Front. Look behind him, they're three and four wide, trying to make a push to the front as the field gains speed in for number one. Kenny Humphrey, if he can rip it back to the start finish line, will win here at Daytona. Seven left. Oh, oh Brad, you love it. Here we go. You love it. Number one gets around. The five gets around. Big, big jump. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to coverage of this Club UK Island Season 4. Top here from Barber Motorsports Park. We'll be sitting along with Rachel Whiteford as we have qualifying just getting underway here at the track located in the heartland of Alabama, which is past week actually hosted the Iron Bowl. So congratulations to uh, Alabama for winning that one, but still, War Eagle. And Rachel, qualifying as you see, just getting itself underway as we're saying right about now. These guys about to start their first laps, a very crowded track on the racetrack. The drafting here is going to be critical. Good evening, Will. Yeah, we're here live now at Barber Motorsports Park for the Club UK Island Skip Barber Racing Series, one of our favourite series here on Racebot TV. Guys are out on track, of course. This is open qualifying tonight. So we're going to see some interesting strategy played out amongst teammates and between separate teams to get that coveted first place on the uh, starting grid, Will. Yeah, and qu qualifying here is arguably going to be slightly more important than it's been at the last couple of rounds. And I think really a top five posi um, position is going to be what you need if you're going to get yourself to victory lane. As we ride on board with Dominic Brennan, he is currently scored in the eighth place in qualifying as he comes down into the chicane. But this track is tight and twisty, not as many overtaking opportunities as what we've seen previously. Well, it's not going to be the draft fest we saw last week for sure, Will. But of course, we have seen passing here before and this Skip Barber car is one of the few cars that can actually make a lot of passes during a lap on this circuit. Anything bigger becomes a bit processional, but we know these guys, we know this car, and we know what they can do with it, so heads up for an exciting race. And currently it is this guy, Tom Ward, who is leading the way in qualifications, qualifying time 1 minute 44.073. He's going to work himself, however, past the start finish line. We will improve on his time, no doubt, as he comes past the straight. 1 minute 38.055008. But Mark Mercer currently now at the top of the standings, and there you can see him in the Club 100 cars. The first row drivers getting themselves. Through the timing stands, we've got ourselves a total of 26 cars attempting to qualify here today. Mark Mercer leads by about three tenths of a second over Jonathan Maycock as they come back down in towards turn number five once again. In fact, those two Club 100 cars, the number 33 and the number eight car, kind of working together there. Mark Mercer got bolted on that lap, however, and that's potentially going to cost him on this lap, Rachel. Yeah, a little bit uh, compromised in the line he wanted to take out of turn five there, Will. Not going to give him the optimum speed, of course, but that is, of course, critical on this track. It's so, so short, so twisty. Everything counts. But, of course, teammates, they could be working up for a tow. It could be working up for helping uh, make up behind him. But it's going to be not this lap for Mercer, I think, as he has another wiggle. He does, and we're adding on board now with 
Jonathan Maycock in the number 100, Club 100 cars. He comes down into the second of the S's. Now, after this, you're basically turning right for three corners in a row. You can just see the car's getting slower and slower. Maycock there, just a little bit of dirty air affecting his car as he comes down into the second to last corner. And now that car ahead of him going a little bit slower than he would have liked to. That is the number eight car, of course of Chris Simpson, another Club 100 car. These three are working in a tandem, but Jonathan Maycock, as he comes past the start-finish line, can he improve on his time, putting himself up into pole position? The answer to that question is gonna be he improves his time, but not his position. He still runs himself in the second position. And there you can see Stuart Adcock as well, currently scored four tenths of a second behind, but he's got a nice little clear bit of traffic ahead of him. And this is gonna be useful for him, Rachel, as he works himself back down out of turn two. Yeah, I can almost say that clear track here is almost as important as the draft wheel and getting that clear track and getting those runs perfectly being able to sight your lines will do a driver more stead on this circuit this is not road america it is not a matter of having teams lined up together and trying to get as much toe as you can yeah as you said earlier starting position will be critical tonight and somebody in the top five will probably win this race due to the nature of this having less opportunity to make those passes and of course, in one week's time, we will head ourselves to Circuit Park Zandvoort. That is where we're going to see a lot of that very close racing once again. Different change of pace here today as we continue to look at Stuart Adcock's scored third place in qualifications for the time being. Long qualifying session here as well of 20 minutes. To round out your top five for the time being, it's Tom Ward in fourth and then Raphael Dreskus who rounds out your top five. As I say, 26 cars attempting to qualify here. As there you can see Adcock as he comes down into that second S and you just see the elevation changes here. So many of those, Rachel, here at Barber Motorsports Park makes it incredibly challenging for these drivers, especially if there's an incident ahead of them. Very difficult. You have to react very quickly. Very true, Will. I think the critical place here will be turn 789 complex, the first of the chicanes on this circuit. Uh, it's tight, it's twisty, and it drops downhill. If we're going to see an incident, I suspect it will probably be there. Order turn 5 hairpin. And if you get caught there, getting past a car that's sideways will be next to impossible. And will definitely break momentum if it doesn't break the car. Well, Adcock pushed wide in his final lap, and that forced him to have his lap invalidated. So he won't get that time any faster on the board. However, we see Clark Williams. He's now moved himself up into fourth place in qualifying. And he's a driver. He's actually got a nice little bit of toe ahead of him. He has got himself, I believe that is Straskus just ahead of him. Clark Williams in the number 98 car. Just get himself past a little bit of slow traffic as he runs down in towards turn number five. Once again, into the hairpin. He will go. Slowest corner on the racetrack, Rachel. And you see, now he's got that dirty air. That will hurt him into chicane. But give him a little bit of toe through this section of the racetrack. That's kind of what he wants. But it's a bit of hit and miss. as that number 80 car of Jaredovic, actually. It's going to cause him a little bit of pressure in the next couple of moments. Yeah, very true. And it's, it's very important to get the toe in the right places here, of course. Some parts of the track, you don't want any. You want to be able to sight your apex, sight the braking points, and go at it clean. But on some of these straights, like the back straight we're seeing uh, Adcock on now, and the front straight, that toe will give you an extra tenth, maybe. And it can advance your position, as we see now. First place, all the way down to currently 12th place, within one second of each other on the racetrack wheel. Indeed, as you can see. Um, Shabidovic working himself now through turns number 12 and 13. And he will just work himself now down into that penultimate corner. He falls down for the time being into the seventh position. But as he works himself past the start finish line, will he be able to improve on his time? You'll see it come up on your screen momentarily. It's going to be a slower lap for him. 138.492. That will keep him up into second place all of a sudden there, Rachel. Yeah, great lap there from Savidovic, pulling out the stops as he, we see him do every week. Of course, one of the participants in that epic battle we saw at the end of last race for the victory there. Savidovic there with front wing damage on that car. That's going to hurt him, Will. It Surprising will with a lap that fast. It will do. And at this track, more than any, having yourself some good straight line speed will be important. But meanwhile, Mark Worser does, Mark Mercer even, Still continues to lead away for him at Anidas as well. Has now moved himself up into third place in the standings. They can see him in that number nine car running their kind of Force India colours. 
for the time being, as you can see him lurking himself back down into towards Kane. Third and shot, and there he comes into the corner. And Rachel, for Anthony Diaz, I think he's again in that situation where he just needs to have himself a good run in the race. Keep his car clean, because we know he's got consistent top five potential. Just haven't had the luck again this season. Yeah, had a few bad opportunities so far, but, you know, this could be his round. We know this track is important to get that position. Currently sitting in third place, that could be a good one for Anthony Des. But he's got to not stop making a few little mistakes that we've seen from him. Occasionally going a bit wide. We saw at Lime Rock, he was a bit of a roadblock to some of the cars behind him. But he ended up holding position, so... If he can just get that position, we know he can hold it. He can defend very well. But if he can do that today, could have a good round. Of course, we saw last time here at uh, Barber, he spanned twice, so... Not something he's going to want to repeat today. No, but he is still in the third place for the time being as he will start himself another lap on the racetrack. Having a look then at Tom Ward as he is working himself out of turn two up this dip. And this little dip here for turn three, Rachel, turn, turn four actually, is a lot more difficult than anyone ever gives it credit for. Yeah, true. It's a very big rise uphill and getting around that kind of cresting apex is a very tough part of the circuit. See now a traffic jam in turn five as drivers try and get that space on track, but yeah, the apex and the kind of crest at turn three, it can throw the car to the outside. It really wants to pull it round, and with this car that's so sensitive to throttle lift oversteer, you could see a few cars having a loop de loop. Indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to step aside for just thirty seconds. We'll be right back immediately. You are watching Racebot TV. <laughs> Welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen. There you can see Jonathan Maycock running himself now down into the fifth position as Tom Ward actually goes to the point now. Rachel moved himself up to the overall provisional pole position. Qualifying time of 1 minute 37.900. First driver to have done so in this session so far. Um, however, that Club 100 car we were looking at, Jonathan Maycock, qualified well originally, falling back a little bit, got himself a nice little lap going on right now, however. He does indeed, and if you can hook this one together and avoid that uh, terrible blockage of traffic, he's got a good chance, but this road is very well, busy right and now. he well. goes completely off the racetrack as well, so that will be another lap over for him. Um, lap times here in the 137 range, he's still going to have himself four laps, so I wouldn't be surprised though if we start seeing more and more drivers coming on towards pit road, getting themselves a new set of tyres. And then going out towards the end of this session, his car ahead of him getting very loose out that final corner. And that is one that is definitely going to be a key component of this race. Let's then check back in with Shavidovich. He's actually got the number 21 car of Tim Hadcock just ahead of him. Actually, we're right along board um, with Adcock as he's working himself now down in towards turn number 11 and 12. In fact, Adcock's slowing right down there, as we can see. Um, but... I think that Shavidovich is in a good place right now. He goes completely off the racetrack. So that's the second drive we've seen doing the last couple of corners. That turn 13 seems to be incredibly difficult for drivers here today, Rachel. It is indeed. Well, it's a very fast corner. So the guys are really pushing the edge of grip on this car. It really wants to make it understeer as we see him running wide there. In fact, the car behind him doing the exact same thing. So it will be a trouble spot to keep an eye on during this race as drivers are trying to eke every little millimeter a tenth of a second they can find out these cars sometimes it's going to be too much as um Shavidovich stays in third place for the time being meanwhile we still got dominic brennan scored on the racetrack he's down in the seventh place right now as he works himself down in towards turn number five mark mercer also still scored on the racetrack there you can see him in the number 33 car whereas we have a look with him as he comes down into what is the turn five hairpin as well. And a lot of these drivers now just warming themselves up 
for one more key flying lap and that final lap is going to be so so difficult and so meaningful for these drivers to get it right can end up with themselves being inside the top five a shot potentially for victory get it wrong and it will be pretty much game over for them they'll have to be fighting for positions just around the top 10 position however what we're going to do is we're going to ride along board then for lap with dominic brennan as he works himself now through turn number 12 in towards turn number 13 and 14 and here you can see him work himself now down into 14a let's say you do three right handers in a row that's the third one of those and then dominic brennan working himself now down in towards turn 15 90 degree left hander to put himself onto the wards of front straight away turn number one is also a 90 degree left hander however it really does fall away as you come down into that corner turn number one two and three rachel incredibly difficult part of the racetrack yeah they are well as we see him now in turn two which is a very wide kind of fast hairpin of sorts it's really throws the car to the outside and now we have him approaching three just watch that car as it tries to pull itself wide as he runs round three and the crest of that hill. Low car on the inside as he runs down to five. You'll get past him with no trouble. Believe that is actually uh, Maycock. Good exit now. This is exactly what he wanted from turn five. Nice, smooth and wide exit, building that speed. You know the old ad adage for the skip barber car, Will? Slow in, fast out. And this is a good example from Brennan. Yeah, but now he comes down to 7, 7A, 7B, using a lot of that curb there nicely on those low curbs of 7A and 7B. A little bit of wheel spin on the way out of the corner. That will slow him down just a little bit as now he comes down to first of these S-bands, turn number 9 and 10. Again, using a lot of that curb, a little bit too much of that curb. That'll push him a little bit wide there on the exit of turn number 10. Short shot away for him to go now before he comes down in towards turn number 11 and 12. That right hand flick into 12 immediately. Immediately opens the car up to get himself down in towards turn number 13, back down into 14, 14A, which he's coming right into now. And then just one more corner to go. You can see the time, bottom of your screen. His time to beat is a 1 minute 37.9. We have only one driver who has got himself into the 1 minute 37. Roderick Savidovic has done himself a 1 minute 38.003. Dominic Brennan, 138.199 for him uh, that time by. However, he does not improve and he is still scored in the fifth position on the racetrack. Savidovic, however, has just gone to the top of the time stands. 1 minute 37.868, Rachel. Yeah, not bad considering you saw a duffed up front wing on that car, so that's a really impressive lap time, Will. Got to say, though, this Skip Barber car, those three chicanes we consider very tough chicanes in most cars, you can almost take them straight in this car because it is so small. It makes this really interesting. And that's the thing, with these open wheel cars, different cars always have different lines. You get some GT cars on here, and they run some incredibly crazy lines, which if you're an open wheel guy, you're thinking, how can they do that? But also, of course, this track hosts around in the Verizon IndyCar series, also on the Mazda Road to Indy as well. So, about as close as you can actually get to a real-life racetrack running on the Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Championship, Rachel. It is indeed, and I think one of the more interesting tracks in North America, personally, in terms of more organic racetracks. We see a lot of places at the uh, car park of the Americas. <laughs> and the things they've done to other circuits in recent times and this is still a fairly accurate representation of Barber there is not a huge amount of runoff in areas there's not large concrete runoffs and pads so drivers can afford to make mistakes it punishes you especially this car if you put a wheel on the grass chances are you'll be following it Yep, as uh, so you can see, Savidovic working himself then out of the final corner. A minute 30 left to go on the play clock, and Savidovic is pushing a little bit wide there as he works himself down towards the start finish line. Uh, don't know if that will have an impact on his time. Indeed, that is a slower lap for him. Just behind, though, having a look for Tom Ward. He's actually scored on pit road. Mark Mercer, there you can see him as he works himself up the hill, down into that second to last corner. He's looking to try and get himself into the 1 minute 37 as well currently as fast as a 1 minute 38.023 as he rides towards the line will he be able to improve his time that time no he doesn't but he's now rachel got one more lap to go he does indeed and one more lap is pretty much all he'll get of course these tires take a while to heat up this could be his best of this tire run will yep as he comes then down 
in towards turn number four. In fact, the car just running very wide ahead of him as well. That is not what he would have wanted to see, but he does get away with it for the time being. Um, and he then comes back down in towards turn number five once again. Um, so then, we've got ourselves now just 27 seconds left on the play clock before the checker flag will come out. Drivers on a lap, well, they will be able to finish it off. If you're not on a lap, well, that is game over for you. Tom Ward is currently scored on pit road. You can see Wardrick Savidovich is actually still scored on a timed lap. So we've got to keep an eye out for that. But we are keeping it with Mark Mercer for the time being as he comes out of the turn and 7 and 8 complex, running himself back down towards turn number 9 and 10 again. Checker flag is out. So this is it now for these drivers. They have got themselves... Whatever lap they are on, they can complete that one. And then they'll be getting themselves to the starting grid for this event. And Mercer pulls off the side of the racetrack. That is going to be his run done. Your top three are all going to be classified without another lap. But we're keeping an eye out on Clark Williams. He darts to the line. Does he improve the time? The answer to that question is 138.4. Not fast enough for him, Rachel. No, it won't be. And Savidovic will keep that pole position. I think it's his first of the year, Will. It is indeed. So then, you can see the last couple of cars just work themselves task towards start finish line. What we will do, however, is we will run through your starting grid for this, the fourth round of the 2014 Club UK Island Skip Barber Racing School Championship here on Racebot TV. And then, to start on pole position here today, it will be Roderick Savidovic with a qualifying time of 1 minute 37. 0.868. Tom Ward, the only other driver to get himself into 1 minute 37, he lines up alongside him on the front row of the grid. Mark Mercer, Dominic Brennan in row number two, and then you head yourself down onto the third row of the grid, and it's going to be Clark Williams and Stuart Adcock. Fahim Atinides and Jonathan Maycock on row number four, and then on row five will be... Raphael Draskis on the inside, and Adrian Bedwell on the outside. Bob Kane and Rich Jones on the sixth row of the grid, with Chris Simpson and Peter Cohen in row number seven. Brendan O'Brien, Mark Connell will roll off on row number eight. Then Tim Adcock, Rob Swindells in row nine. James Still, Alan Patterson rounding out your top 20. And the remainder of the qualifying field coming up on your screen. with the six drivers. Looking to make that journey here to Barber Motorsports here today. And Rachel, going to be a close race. Not as much drafting, but still overall a close race. It will certainly be, Will. What we have to hope for is that these guys will not fight early on and will try and run together and just keep up. If the guys start battling, we know we're going to have one car maybe pull away. This is the sort of track where it can happen. So we are here at Barber Motorsports getting set for the start. Of this, the club UK and Ireland, um, club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship here on Racebot TV. And don't forget, we are with you every Monday night here on Racebot TV, bringing you coverage of this incredible series. And they can see as we look high above aerial coverage today, brought to you by And One Designs. As we are just waiting for the last of the cars to make themselves down to the starting grid. Then those lights will go on and we'll get ready to start racing here today. And don't forget also, ladies and gentlemen, the IOC.com Pro Series of Road Racing takes place every Saturday here. Exclusively live on Racebot TV. And we'll be with you every Monday night for this Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship. There you can see then, Roderick Stavidovich heading himself now down to the starting grid. As we wait for the last of the cars to line up, they will go racing for 15 laps here today in the heart of Alabama. Lights are on, on top of the icing.com gantry, and this round of the championship will start right now. And a good start by Roderick Stavidovich as they come down in towards turn number one for the first time. The 09 car right there with him as they storm down in towards turn one for the first time. Looking so, it's a good run for your first five, six rows, Rachel, as they all storm down towards turn three for that first time. It's a good start indeed. In fact, every single car has gotten through the turn one and two complex wheel completely unharmed. Yep, so there you can see a little bit too wide racing for the pack as they come down into five for the first time. 
nice close tight racing as they do so and this is going to be the key corner now they'll come out of turn five that short run down in towards turn number seven there you can see Javid Rich as he now works himself down into that corner you'll have yourselves the field all storming back behind him there is a little bit of two almost three wide racing Rachel as they come down into seven and eight for the first time there is indeed and we've had a few bits of contact so far Will but it's only been wheel banging and everybody so far has made it through cleanly, although not very really changed. We've got a car. Oh, around. yeah, we've got the number four and the number Robson Dells, and uh, I believe also you will have the number 21 car, Tim Adcock, in there as well. But they. Brendan O'Brien will. Yeah, Rob Twin Dells is going to be classified as well down the field. So we'll let this lap get through the books and then we'll come back to that one. But Roderick Savidovich does continue to lead the way as they come down in towards 13 and 14 for the first time. And there we have a look from the rear of Roderick Savidovich as he comes into 14, 14 and 15 for the first time to complete the first lap here at Barber Motorsports Park with the early advantage over Tom Ward of about three tenths of a second. But Ward is closing up as they come down in towards turn number one again for the first time. Very quickly going to get ourselves a quick look at what happened down the field with Rob Swindells as he worked himself down. There you can see a four-car, three-car incident there. You had Brendan O'Brien involved in that one as well. We'll get one more look at that one as we have a look from on board. Brendan O'Brien coming down into the chicane. All went wrong for him, Rachel. It did. He just wobbled and turned right where her uh, left even will. I can't tell my left from my right. No, he just lost it. The car turned around and unfortunately it was in front of a few other cars. So, really unfortunate accident there. But that complex of corners, I think the viewers... Whoa, contact again as well. Sorry, in turn five, Will. We have the number, I believe that is the 94 of Mark O'Connell. Having a bit of a moment with the 92 and 21 cars. That is uh, Tim Adcock. And I think... I don't even I don't know, know who but 92 we've is. Tim Adcock anyway. actually running himself with no front to his car. There we can see Tim Adcock, no front wing on that car at all as he continues to run in the 18th position on the racetrack, well down the field after being in the wars in the early going. However, out front, you've got Shabidovic leading this one. But, oh no, Shabidovic running very wide. That's going to allow Ward right up behind him as they come down into 13 and 14. And somehow, Shabidovic kept it pointing in the right direction and continues to lead this motor race. But it's back this pack up because now it's Shabidovic from Ward, from Mercer, from Brennan. And then to round out your top five, that is to your top five actually. Clark Williams now running himself in that fifth spot. But he can see Shabidovic and he has all of a sudden and got Tom Ward right behind him, Rachel. He does indeed, and we have a seven-car breakaway, Will. The seven cars within two seconds on the racetrack. So it's a pretty frantic action there. Of course, the top four within one second. Uh, these guys running pretty hard. Ward's got a bit of a run now on Sabinovich. He might have a look running down to turn five, Will, as he goes for the inside line. Yep, and there you can see that as they work themselves up the hill. Side-by-side -side racing. Battle for the race lead on the inside. The 09 car of Tom Ward, and he will move himself to the race lead in that 09 car and there you can see confirmation the car just behind him is that number 80 Roderick Savinovich but Savinovich looking to do the crossover as they come down in towards turn number seven and eight again keep an eye on Savinovich he is that car with the red amber and green stripes as they come down into seven and eight and Ward able to hold him off as they come out of the corner as you now ride a long board with Shavidovich. That is the gap to the number 33 car just behind him. Absolutely nothing on the racetrack. But out front, Rachel, it's now Tom Ward, your second leader of the day. It is, and we've seen some good running from Tom Ward this season. And he's pretty good in those close quarters well. Savidovich just lost momentum, and that cost him. He nearly had a look back at Ward, but he couldn't keep it there through the chicane of 7A, 7B. But let's not count him out yet. He'll be looking to take back that position. Mark Mercer, though, could be uh, sniffing now while these two fight. Yeah, and there you can actually see Mark Mercer running himself in the third position on the racetrack. Quarterfinal in that third position, running in that third position as they work themselves out that final corner. It's complete three laps of 15 here at Barber Motorsports Park, and they all storm down in towards turn number one. Right again, just behind, actually, Rob Kane looking as though he's going to try and make a move down to the inside. And the number 99 car, Peter Cohen, not close enough as they work themselves down in towards turn number one. And uh, we talked about overtaking opportunities, Rachel. Unlike some of the tracks that we've been at with the large drafting zones, we really have only got ourselves two, maybe three overtaking opportunities, and that means that you've got to be very careful where you choose them. There's actually a little bit of a half move there 
by Mercer over Shavidovich as they come down into five and out of five. Yeah, we've got that's the 902, uh, 708, sorry, Rob Kane having a look on the outside of Peter Cohen through turn five. Won't get it done, but he has got a better exit, Will. Yeah, and there you can see as they come down in towards that downhill sequence of corners. They are single five on race spot, but here again will come that 708 car of Rob Kane looking down to the inside and again. But inside line doesn't seem to be working for drivers. You have got to break very hard into that corner. In fact, now Rob Kane under a little bit of pressure from Chris Simpson. As we ride along board with Simpson actually in that number eight car, working themselves through the turn nine and ten complex, Rachel. Yeah, good exit there for Simpson. He'll have a bit of extra speed, but it won't be enough. He's gonna make sure he doesn't run wide going through 13, as we've seen so many drivers do. Get himself into position, have a good exit from the final corner. He can make a run into turn one, Will. Well, your top four drivers currently separated by just one second on the racetrack. There is confirmation of Dominic Brennan, who runs himself in fourth place right now. Just nine tenths of a second back, but he goes a little bit wide down that final corner. And that is going to be, I think, the difference maker in this race, Rachel. If you get yourself an incident in that final corner, you lose momentum all the way down through turn number one and two, all the way down actually into turn five. And it's very easy for you then to be going onto defense. Otherwise, drivers are going to be swarming around you. And you've now actually got your top eight He's off. still separated no. by second. Ward, big slip up from Ward. Bit of a sideways moment there. Tank slapper going on as Savidovic will have that momentum. Now Ward's is broken. Savidovic is going to go sail straight past the lead in turn five, Will. Yeah, and there you can see Savidovic back to the point. But Ward is going to try and do the crossover. He's going to stay on the outside line. We talked about how the outside line is arguably the better line to have. As we ride along board with Tom Ward coming out of five. It's going to be a drag race down into the seven and eight complex. Will Ward let him go? He will try and stay on the outside line. They'll be too wide through the corner. Ward just doesn't have enough, but is actually going to get a much better run out the corner. But that momentum in the centre of 7B just killed him. Tom Ward down into second place. We'll get ourselves a replay to show you what happened with him. And this is coming out of turn number three and four. And it's going to hurt him all the way up the hill. As there you can actually see, um, a little bit late back to that replay. But you can see Tom Ward there losing that position to Roderick Savinovich. We'll rewind the take back a little bit further, Rachel. And Tom Ward, we don't really see that many incidents from him. But when he does, it's always sometimes in critical situations. That's... No, absolutely correct, Will. He just didn't have quite the line. He got a bit wide, put a wheel on the grass, and it just wobbled the car. It just broke the momentum he had, and it was nearly everything. The dive into seven, uh, though, was a little bit desperate. Nearly gave Mark Mercer an entire front wing full of gearbox. Yeah, and now we're just getting ourselves a quick look to show you what happened as Rodrik Zvidovic goes back to the race lead here. Now with a two-tenths of a second advantage over Tom Ward. We get confirmation as they work themselves back down in towards, I believe this is turn number three, once again as we have a look now from the rear of Tom Ward as he's running himself back down towards turn number five, does he have a run now over Roderick Stavidovic, will he look down to the inside, the answer's going to be, he will try and make the move down to the inside, late braking zone, he actually gets hit from behind by the head, engine blown, engine blown, yeah, so someone we blown that engine, Clark Williams, he's obviously gone for a gear, Either had a bag full of neutrals and panicked, or he's just gone plonk. Straight in the wrong gear. So, Clark Williams is going to be classified as out of this race. But down in the pack is Tom Ward. Mercer Mark Mercer's now got himself up into the second position on the racetrack. So, we're looking at Ward. And whilst that was going on, Mark Mercer's now got himself up into P2. He is now trying to hunt down Tom Ward in that battle for the race lead. But now, Ward has himself a half-second advantage over Mark Mercer as they come down in towards 11 and 12 once again still very close and um, if unless I'm very much mistaken this is the first big engine failure we've seen since Sonoma um, last season and uh, unless words get me wrong was it Clark Williams who had that failure at Sonoma as well I don't quote me but I think it might have been uh, it's something you can definitely do we know a lot of guys in this series run a H pattern box rather than sequential and it's one of those things you can do when you're in a panic Grab that wrong gear and all your pistons and belong to us. As you can see, there's the gap between Tom Ward and Mark Mercer, about four tenths of a second, as we're now getting close to the halfway distance of this event. And you can see Tavidovich as well, just two tenths of a second back. And Tavidovich does have a much better run off the corner. As you can see already, going to defense is Mark Mercer in that number 80 car as we ride along board with Tavidovich. 
He's going to look to the outside as they come down in towards turn number five. Um, but this is actually going to be mighty close. Will Sabinovich be able to make that move work on the outside? No, he won't. And he doesn't get enough momentum to get the cut over down in towards seven, I think. No, he falls into line for the time being. So Savinovich trying to make that move, but incredibly good defense there by Mark Mercer, Rachel. Yeah, it is indeed, and Mercer's always been pretty good with that sort of thing. Uh, against Davidovic, he's always suffered on 5 and 7. So, trying to recover places in those corners might not be where his strategy should lie well. Meanwhile, down the field, we have still got close battling going on. This is Rob Kane and Chris Simpson. Uh, they are battling for P10 on the racetrack. In fact, just ahead of them as well, you have got yourself Adrian Bidwell running yourself in the ninth position, and there are the times between those drivers on your screen as it stands for the time being. They would have settled down for the time being. And for the most part, this mid-pack is actually a lot more spread out than what we're used to, Rachel. We are riding along board, though, very quickly with Chris Simpson. He runs in the 11th place, but this mid-pack is a lot more spread out than what we're used to. And that is partially because of the very technical nature of this racetrack. It is indeed, and it's a circuit that really spreads out the field. You've got the faster cars who can stay together, like our lead pack, eight cars, and they will just about hold themselves, you know, ahead whilst fighting. Whereas this really does bring a disparity in the in the track position, Will, just due to the nature of how difficult some of the corners are. This is why the people at the front are there. They can keep that momentum going, which allows them to get back to the front. Uh, we're just having a look on board with Fahim Atinides. He was able to make a move over Jonathan Maycock in the Club 100 car. Having a look to see whether Maycock is going to try and look down to the outside. I don't think he will as they come down in towards turn number five once again. And Atenides running himself in the sixth position right now. That is up one place from where he qualified in today's event. Maycock runs himself in the seventh position. And Druskus is right there behind them in P8. As they can see, your top eight drivers all within one camera shot as they come down in towards turn number seven and eight once again down the hill they will come at the rear of that pack as we say is Raphael Draskus running himself in that eighth position right now and importantly though he is still only three and a half seconds back from your race leader also importantly Tom Ward is still is now scored is leading this race once again um so read it down into P number three and there you can see your top three drivers Tom Ward, Mark Mercer, Roderick Savinovic, 1 2 3 in the racetrack. Dominic Brennan runs himself in fourth place. Stuart Adcock runs himself in the fifth position. Those five drivers, Rachel, separated by 1.5 seconds on the racetrack as they come down to complete them number 8 of 15 here. Incredibly close, Will, and that would. <laughs> those guys are running such amazing pace here today, including the battling. It's awesome, awesome to watch. Uh, just the tactics of Savinovic, especially. I've loved his driving so far. He's had a few corners where he's not particularly as quick. And he's lost that traction to Mercer. I don't think he will have the pace to get back to the lead. I could be wrong. I might be wrong. I'm often wrong. <laughs> but from what he's shown so far, I'm not certain unless Mercer and Ward get into each other. Which isn't unusual as we see Mercer running incredibly wide out of three. Yeah, that's actually going to allow Shavinovich to look down to the outside. Once again, they are too wide, too deep for just a moment as they work themselves out of corner number five that time by. And you can see Dominic Brennan starting to come just slowly into the mix as well as they work themselves down towards the complex once again. We ride along board then with Dominic Brennan in the 2-1-2 car. Lost a little bit of momentum that time by Stuart sure, Adcock just one-tenth of a second back from him as they work themselves now out of turn number eight. And there you can see just as our 360 cam rotates itself Sure, Adcock just in the background there, keeping the pressure on Dominic Brennan. And I think that if anything happens with this top three, Rachel, then these two drivers, Brennan and Adcock, are there ready to pounce. They will indeed, and I think it was Brennan who won last time out here. He took advantage of an early, uh, well, mid-race screw-up between the leaders, including Sebastian Job, and took that win. So there's every chance the same could happen today. Mark, uh, Tom Ward, we know, has had some incidents in traffic battling hard and it's costing race wins so this could happen again will as we see him and mercer going very hard yeah as they can see tom ward leads away mark mercer runs himself in the second position if you want to know where sebastian job is well you can see him every saturday here on race Spot tv as he's competing in the irison.com pro series of road racing and himself a good outing this past week rachel except for one or two sloppy incidents costing him potentially a top five good to see though job and that Apex Racing UK team doing a sterling job representing Club UK and Ireland in the Ireland.com Pro Series Road Racing. 
and it's a great series, Will. Well worth watching. Some amazing action going on. Also, uh, Richard Avery from this series also running in that as a privateer, I believe, although affiliated with one of the teams. Yeah, the PPR car of Richard Avery. Again, nice little battle for him going on this season. Wouldn't be surprised if he makes it into the 2015 Irish.com World Championship Grand Prix Series. As I say that, here comes Mark Mercer right behind now. Tom Wards have come down the chicane once again. And that was actually a very good run out of five that time by for Mark Mercer. And I think now, because again, because of the limited overtaking opportunities at this track, Rachel, he might have a go, a half go, to see where... If Ward is weak, if you can find a way of finding a weakness in the armour of Tom Ward and that 0-9 car to see whether or not it can just force the pressure just a little bit on that friction racing car to maybe try and take that race lead away. It's always possible, but uh, of course he's got a Savidovich hounding the back of his car so he can't spend too long trying to fight his way through. As they come down to complete 10 laps out of 15. So there'll be five laps to go this time by to run through your top 10. It's Tom Ward who leads away from Mark Mercer, Roderick Sivinovich in third, Dominic Brennan in fourth, Drew Adcock in fifth, Fahim Martinez, Jonathan Maycock, Raphael Draskus, Adrian Bidwell, Chris Simpson. They are your top 10. Confirmed retirees for the time being while they are Brendan O'Brien scored eight laps down and Clark Williams. Over an engine failure, he has scored down in the 25th position for the time being. Let's look on board then with Mark Mercer as they come out of corner number three. Does he get a run? He does get a good run actually this time by over Tom Ward. And there you can see the speed chart is up. And Mercer looking to the outside as they come down in towards turn number five. But that time by Mercer just not able to make it work on that outside line. He does get again a good run off the corner. But now Shavidovic putting a bit of pressure on to Mercer, who in turn is putting the pressure still onto Tom Ward. Five laps to go, Rachel, and all of a sudden this race has come alive. I think it's not been uh, dead for the last 11 laps, Will. Uh, these guys have been at it since the drop of the green flag. Uh, we can see Ward now. He's playing a very defensive game. He's looking after that position, doesn't care if he punches him up. He just wants to hold on to what he's got. And... I think that might end up being Stavidovich sneaking past Mercer as he tries to make a move on Ward, changing the order of the podium and necessarily the people on it. And that is the thing for the drivers, Brennan and Adcock running in P4, P5. And actually, just have a look at the lap times as well. Fahim Atenides in six is actually running faster than your race leaders right now. So give it maybe a lap or so. They will be right there in the pack as well. That second pack, Rachel, is starting to catch up. And it seems to me that Tom Ward, ever since he's gone into that defensive line, it just looks as though he's losing lap time now, about two, maybe three times of a second a lap. That is allowing that second pack, managed by Fahim Atenides, to come back into the picture. It is indeed, and Anthony is, of course, running in clean air, so he can choose his own points. Whereas Ward is having to defend against Mercer, and everybody from Mercer back is having to basically break where the other guy breaks. So they're actually slowing themselves down, massively doing this. Bringing other cars into the mix, especially with momentum, could be a big factor. As we see Mercer once again going for his favourite outside line. Yeah, and here you can see Mercer trying the outside line, but he's leaving that door open again to Roderick Savinovich as they come out of turn number five. There you can see as we ride along board with Roderick Savinovich. In fact, you see there just ahead, Mark Mercer is going to try and do something down into the chicane. He tries to go side by side as they work themselves into the chicane. Not quite close enough, but he was trying to find a gap on that inside line, Rachel. A gap that just didn't exist at all. Um, and for Mark Mercer, very lucky that he didn't end up on the grass there. It is indeed, but you've got to try something at that point in the race. You know, we've got maybe three laps to go, and he has to find a way past now, or he's never going to. If he doesn't do it, other guys are going to close up. He don't win the race, and you've got Savinovich. to make take chances. Oh, Savinovich is very close, running wide as usual, though. He's just all over Mercer. Mercer's losing so much time trying to attack Ward that Savinovich is all over him. He's in a really uncomfortable position, Will. Yeah, and Shavidovic was so strong there on that final sector. He had to check up quite a lot to avoid running over the rear of Mercer. As they come down in towards turn number one once again, it is still Ward for Mercer from Shavidovic. This time by three laps to go. Down in towards turn number one once again. There you can see Shavidovic not as good in that first couple of corners. And that, I think, is the issue for Shavidovic. That he just doesn't have the momentum when he needs it into the passing zones. 
No, he seems to suffer. He pushes a little deep in the entries, Will, and I think that costs him here a lot comes, of momentum on the exit. Here comes Mercer. Here comes Mercer. He's looking to the outside as they come down in towards turn number five once again. This time, a much better run for Mark Mercer. Can he hold it tight enough? Oh, it's a little contact. bit of contact there between the two of the drivers. Mercer's now going to be under attack from Roderick Savinovic. They come down into the chicane once again. This is the opening that Savinovic has been looking for. And here you can see two wide racing between Mark Mercer and Roderick Savinovic. Who will come out ahead? It does look as though Savinovic all over the grass there on the outside line. They stay too wide. They make contact. They get away with it as they work themselves down in towards turn number nine once again. But they continue to battle as they come down in towards turn number nine. Savinovic they had the inside line, wasn't able to complete the pass there, Rachel, and now he's under attack from the 2-1-2 car of Dominic Brennan. Brennan is going to find a way past. There you can see it's right along board with Dominic Brennan. Shavinovich, I think, is out of this one now as he cuts all the way over the grass. That will be a slowdown penalty, I think, for him, and that might be two in the course of the lap. Shavinovich is off the racetrack. Dominic Brennan and also number 52 car, Drew Adcock, goes past. And Savinovic, in the space of one lap, went from almost having P2 to falling down outside of the top five. Well, I think he had that, uh, the iRacing.com stewards gave him a slowdown penalty after turn seven because he completely missed that apex. Yeah. So I can't see that he didn't have it. I think he just fought him to say, I, oh, I could have battled you. I could have stayed here. But I think he knew it because he cut the next corner. He went off the track. I think he's more than out of Meanwhile, it. Meanwhile, here comes Adcock. Adcock's looking to the outside. Sorry, Rachel, of Dominic Brennan. This is a two-wide battle now. Which has gone on for a couple of corners. As you can see, Adcock on the inside line to the next corner. He's pushing himself very wide. It's going to be a free wide situation because here comes Savinovic again. They are free wide down in towards turn number five. Who's going to make it work? It's actually going to be Savinovic. No, he won't. Adcock will get the move complete as they're going to be free wide behind them as they work themselves down in towards turn number seven once again. But it's all kicked off. And also, whilst we say that, Mark Mercer, he's looking to the outside once again. Battle for the race lead between Mercer and now Tom Ward. And Mercer still not being able to find a way past with a lap and a half to go, Rachel. He can't indeed, although great racing there from one half of the dynamic Adcocks, the uh, the flying Adcocks, I should say, because they, they do that every week. Uh, so fast, took his opportunity and got a brilliant position there on those guys. And of course, that's a podium spot. Mercer, he's we know he's not quite had the speed to catch Ward. I don't think he's going to do it well. Well, it's going to be a fascinating last lap here as Ward pushes a little bit wide there as they work themselves through turn number 12. We've seen a lot of drivers do that, but of course, Shavinovich has had issues there in both qualifying and the race, but arguably costing momentum on the first lap of this motor race. Ladies and gentlemen, as the cars come out of the final corner, this time by the white flag in hand. One more lap to go. Dominic Brennan now is going to go side by side. And I believe he's just lost a position there to Raphael Druskas. Um, you see, white flag is now up on your screens. And we've got ourselves two key battles going on here. Tom Ward and Mark Mercer. They can see battle for the front. But also Chavinovic going to go side by side with Adcock. Adcock pushes a little bit wide there out of turn number two. We ride on board with Roderick Savinovic. And it doesn't look as though he's going to try and do the crossover as they work themselves up the hill. Savinovic to the outside line. Will he have enough as they work themselves in a straight line? Down to turn five. The two make contact. They hold on. Savinovic moves himself up into P3, Rachel. He does indeed. That's quite an interesting move there. I'm not sure what to make of that one. But uh, the two of them definitely battered wheel hubs, and that's given Savidovic back that third place. Mercer, one Can more Adcock go. come back at him? Mercer's going to try and have one more go into the chicane. He's not going to be anywhere near close enough. Adcock also four turns to a second back from Savidovic. It doesn't look as though that there's going to be any change in that position. But now you can see Mark Mercer is trying everything, trying every single line possible as they work themselves down in towards 9 and 10 for the final time. Now, they've really arguably got themselves one more sequence of corners. They're into it now. You can see there is Mark Mercer just four times from a second back. They come out of 12 in towards 13 for the final time. Riding all on board. It's still a die now for Mark Mercer, but he's not going to have it. Tom Ward will work himself out of the final corner. As you see, very high there for Mark Mercer on that final corner. Trying to find a way to do a sweep. But Tom Ward will come out of the final corner. Almost a drag race to the line there. But Tom Ward will claim victory here at Barber Motorsports Park for Mark Mercer by three tenths of a second. Then it will be Roderick Savinovich who comes home in the third spot. Stuart Adcock will come. In fact, no, Adcock comes home in third. And Savinovich, Maycock rounds out your top five. And then um, Fahim Atenides in sixth. Draskas, Brennan, Simpson and Bidwell round out your top ten. Tom Ward. 
able to hold on, just as you said, Rachel. Do you want to take a breath, Will? Yeah. <laughs> just to run through that top ten again, because we've had some numbers change as people cross the line there. Of course, winner tonight, Tom Ward. Second place, Mark Mercer. Wojciech Savidovic in third. Great recovery drive from him. Stuart Adcock just missing out in fourth. Jonathan Maycock in fifth. Rafael Drasquez in sixth place. Fahim Antonides in seventh. Dominic Brennan in eighth. Chris Simpson and Adrian Bidwell rounding out your top ten. What a race, Will. Incredible to run through the rest of your results then. Page two. Rob Kane in P11. James Steele in 12. Rich Jones 13th. Peter Cohen 14. Anna Patterson 15. With Ashley Blakely 16th. Mark O'Connell 17th. Robert Plumley in 18th position. Rob Swindell 19th. And Tim Adcock running out your top 20. And there you can see confirmation of the final lot of results up on your screen. Well, Tom Ward, he was able to hold on, Rachel, but Mark Mercer gave him a real bat on that last lap and a half. He was indeed. I'm just hearing from uh, Roderick Zavidovich now. He got a slowdown, didn't know what to do to clear it. Well, slow down, funnily enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't know what else you'd do when it says slow down. You you slow down. Just uh, not enough, Fahim. Sorry, uh, Roderick, not Fahim. <laughs> we'll talk about Fahim Antonides. Um, no, there are pain because depending on what lap of the race will depending on uh, where you are and how much you do it and how long you wait before you do it they can be how long is a piece of string one of the most annoying things in racing but he dealt with it and he came back to a podium finish after dropping as low as seventh so one hell of a recovery there and of course these guys they didn't have as many overtaking opportunities today and i said all race long you have to set up your pass and i think that the frustrations of not being able to have that same two free wide racing we've seen the majority of the last season almost now really did show on some of these guys as they were frustrated they couldn't find a lane pass. Javidovic had some issues, they had some very sketchy moments. Adcock also just sat there, you know, waiting for things to up around him. Mercer, arguably, he didn't push hard enough in the key sections of the racetrack down into turn one because that turn one gives you the momentum all the way through two three up the hill through the kink in four down into that breaking zone into five it seemed to me that mark mercer tried to make the moves into seven every time and just seven just didn't work for him it didn't and he seemed to have a lot of trouble getting around the outside of people but he never tried to get that in defensive inside line and when he did in turn five that was his nemesis because he just couldn't get that momentum out well well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been another very entertaining race in the Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship here on Racebot TV. Confirmation one more time then of your top 10 as Tom Ward taking home victory. Mark Mercer in second actually had the fastest lap of the race. Uh, no, he didn't actually. Savinovich had the fastest lap of the race, um, but neither of those was able to use that to an advantage to get themselves to the top step of the podium. Adcock Stewart in fourth, Jonathan Maycock in fifth, Rafael Draskas in sixth, Raheem Akinida seventh, Robert Greta in eighth, Chris Simpson in ninth, and Adrian Bidwell rounding out your top ten. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, next Monday night as Monday nights continue to be Skippy Nights here on Racebot TV. In one week's time, we'll be from Circuit Park, Zandvoort. Rachel, Zandvoort, a crazy, crazy track in the Netherlands. It's uh, almost as crazy as the Dutch themselves. It's fast, it's twisty, and it's one of the classic racetracks, I think, in the history of racing. It's going to bring us an amazing, amazing race, Will. So then, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a RaceBot TV presentation of the club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Racing School Championship, powered by And One Design. Myself, Will Vincent, and Rachel Whiteford. We will talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.